All right, good morning, guys. Uh, I'm gonna post four short videos for you guys today, and um, in these videos, I'm gonna show you where to use law of sines and where to use law of cosines. When do we use when do we use one or the other? And I've got five cases on the board, five different types of triangles, or I should say, five different pieces of given information we're gonna look at to show you when to use the law of sines and when to use the law of cosines. But before we start, I want to invent, I want to address what I said in the law of cosines video that it, and I said it just for a brief moment that um, it doesn't really matter where, I, I showed you guys that if the angle C is here and your side length C is on the opposite side, let's call this angle A, let's call this angle B, and this is side length B and this is side length A, that we write the law of cosines as C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. And I mentioned for a brief moment that Yes, this is the opposite relationship, but it doesn't really matter um, whether you use C for the angle and the opposite side, or you use A, or you use B. And just to show you guys how this works, that notice, if I circle this angle and this opposite side, now it, I, I could have, the variables could really be put anywhere. So this formula could be rewritten. I want you guys to understand that these variables are interchangeable. So if I switch this around and watch, if I put, if I call this angle A, this side length A, and I call this angle C and this side length C, that you can still write the law of cosines formula for this triangle as A squared is equal to, or its opposite side squared is equal to uh, B squared, plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of angle A. And if you guys notice that now we have, as long as the angle at the end and the side length squared at the beginning are opposite of each other, and the information in between is the information from the other two sides, then the formula is still true. Similarly, we could say that this is angle B this is side length B. It's just to show you guys that the variables are interchangeable. It's all about opposite relationship. Okay, so if this is angle A and this is side length A, then we could write the formula as, I think you guys see it now, we could write it as side length B squared is equal to, uh, let's see, A squared plus C squared minus uh, 2AC Cosine of angle B, just to make sure I don't make a mistake. All right, so again, uh, it doesn't really matter. As long as you guys are relating uh, the angle and the angle at the end and the side squared at the beginning are opposite of one another, the formula works. Now, on the board, we see five cases of information that can be given on the triangle. We're going to talk about when, uh, how do we know when to use a law of signs, and then how do we solve? Well, in the videos, we're going to solve the entire triangle. We're going to find all of the information on the triangle. So in this uh, triangle here, just really quick, I said it in the other video, that we read around a triangle. Uh, we read the side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, angle. We read around the triangle like this. Notice we see a side, and the next piece of information that we could know is an angle. The next piece of information we could know is a side, and we just read around like this. So let's go ahead and look at the information here. Notice that we have angle that's known. Okay, we're just going to go clockwise around the triangle. It really doesn't matter. You can go clockwise or you can go counterclockwise, but let's just keep it uh, the same. So I'm just going to go clockwise around the triangle. We know that we have an angle known. I'm talking about the information given. We know an angle. And if we go clockwise, the next piece of information that we know is a side, and the next piece of information that we know is an angle, and so we have angle, side, angle. Okay. On this triangle, notice that we know an angle. We don't know this side, so I'm not going to list a side. Notice the next piece of information that we know is an angle, and the next piece of information we know is a side. I guess I'm underlining the sides. Okay. All right, now on this triangle, same thing, clockwise around the triangle, we know a side, we know an angle, and we know a side, okay? And on the last triangle, we know a side, and we know a side, and we know another side, 
All right, so to keep it simple, if you know more angles than you know sides, then you use the law of sine. So notice that we know two angles and one side. Again, if we know more angles, we use what? Law of sines, okay? On this triangle, we know two angles, so we know more angles than sides, so we're gonna use what? Law of sines, okay? And if you're using the law of sines to begin with, then you can use the law of sines to solve all information on the triangle. Unlike with the law of cosines, uh, you may have to switch from law of cosines to law of sines. You'll see as the videos go on. All right, so in this case, we know more sides than we know angles. So in this case, we're going to use law of what? Law of cosines. So we use law of cosines when we know more sides. Here we know what? Three sides, okay? And in this case, more sides than we know angles. So we're going to use law of cosines. And on the last triangle over here, we are not going to do a video on this. I'm just going to briefly mention it, that there are technically five cases. Uh, to explain this thoroughly would, would take um, a whole lot of videos to do that. So I'm just going to mention it. But in this case, notice that we know a side. The next piece of information we know is a side. And the next piece of information we know is an angle. And we always used to joke in geometry that if you take these and turn them around, if you flip those letters, you form a bad word. Uh, I think you guys can see that. And so that's kind of one way to remember that this is the special case. And just for information purposes, we're not, again, I said we're not going to investigate this, but if you had to do this, you would have to use law of signs which kind of contradicts what I said over here, that if you know more angles, you, you use law of sines, and if you know more sides, then you use law of cosines. You could be saying, well, Mr. Jackson, we know more sides and we know angles, so why are we not using law of cosines? Well, if you try to set up the law of cosines here, you're going to see that uh, it falls short. It won't work. And what happens with this case is you end up with triangles that are unsolvable, meaning that you, it's called an ambiguous case, a triangle that has... A contradiction in its information and so to investigate this would mean that you guys would have to look at cases where you do have a solution and cases where you don't have a solution so what I'm going to do just for those that are curious is I'm gonna send a picture out of the book of the explanation on this case if you guys want to read up on it you can also research it but I'm not going to cover this in the videos so in the next videos I'm gonna send you four of them they're gonna be very short I'm gonna show you how to solve this triangle completely this triangle completely, this one completely, and this one, okay? Again, remember that the law of cosines is, uh, uh, it's kind of arbitrary how you set up your information. So I think most students find it easiest to just use the first formula, but if you do the first formula, then you have to make sure that you're uh, writing your variables in the correct spot. Anyway, uh, excited. I got the Mayber Mayberries connected. Uh, they're in, uh, in the class. We've got... Um, uh, Madison Vernon and so it looks like most of you guys are connected and I'm hoping that you guys are understanding the videos Please don't hesitate to reach out to me and ask for help. I tutored one student over the over the uh, Google um, uh, Hangout yesterday. Well, I guess we use Google Meet, not Google Hangout, but uh, please uh, reach out to me also If you guys are doing the videos and completing the problems, you do not have to do the assigned work um on Google Classroom. You just have to complete at least one problem per video and keep it in a folder and at the end of the year you guys will turn that in. But anyway, excited for you guys and I will get back to you soon.